Hello there. How's it going? Today's lesson is about double exposure effect. So follow us and focus on the steps. Step 1. For this tutorial example, we are going to need our base images to blend together. Run Photoshop and go to File Greater Than Open, CMD plus O, and navigate to the folder that contains your images. We have a profile shot of a woman and a sunlit street scene. Select both and press open to proceed. Step 2. These images have been chosen because they have specific properties that work well for a double exposure effect. The street photo, in particular, is a staple of this technique. The two rows of buildings with the gap down the middle will be quite effective. Focus to see how it works. Step 3. Our main image of the woman is 3,333 pixels wide by 1,500 pixels high. Any settings and brush sizes used are based on an image of this size. If you are working with different sized images, then you may find that you need to alter your settings and sizes to match the image size. Step 4. This figure has a gray background. For the double exposure technique to look its best, the figure needs cutting out so it is on a plain white background. Luckily, of course, Photoshop comes armed with several tools to help us achieve this. Step 5. Go to the toolbar on the left of your screen and choose the Quick Selection Tool W. With the Quick Selection Tool active, the Tool Options panel above displays options for altering its parameters. Choose a brush of about 20 pixels in size and check the Add to Selection and Auto Enhance buttons. Step 6. As a side note, you can see that the Tool Options panel also has a button called Select Subject. This is an automated version of what we are about to do next. We are doing it manually as we would always recommend that you give yourself the chance to get more hands-on with Photoshop's tools. Step 7. The tool works by detecting contrasting edges in your image. The more contrast your subject has against its background, the easier the tool will find it to detect them. Start by clicking and holding the quick selection tool brush on the tip of her ponytail. Step 8. Now start to drag the brush tip up slowly along her hair. The tool begins selecting areas it thinks are similar. Keep the brush within the confines of the figure's outline. Don't worry if the selection is not super accurate. This can be improved later on in the process. Step 9. Continue to work your way around the figure. If the selection starts outside the outline of the figure, don't worry. You can simply go to the Tool Options panel above and click on the Subtract Selection button or hold the Alt key. You can now remove any overspill. Step 10. Click the Quick Selection tool on an area you want to remove and start to drag the tool over the overspill area slowly. As an example, the small area between her hands and her arm needs removing. Click on it and the tool removes that area from the active selection. Step 11. Once you have the figure selected, click on the Select and Mask button. This opens the various tools you can use to refine the edges of the active selection. Make sure you have the Refine Edge tool, R, selected and choose a small brush of about 50 pixels. Step 12. Use this Refine Edge tool to brush over any areas that need refining the edges of the hair are the most obvious. The more you brush over those areas, the better the refinement of those edges becomes. You can usually keep the brush properties at their defaults for this. Step 13. Once you have refined the selection to your satisfaction, you can simply click OK and return to your main document. The selection is now much more accurate, and we can use it to remove that intrusive gray background before we move on. Step 14. Make sure the selection is active, go to the Layer Options panel, and then click on the Add a Mask button. A mask is added to the image, which is now on a layer. Any area outside the selection is colored black, which effectively conceals the gray background. Step 15. Next, we need to make a new layer. Go to the Layer Options panel again and click the Create a New Layer button. Name this new layer base and then click and drag it, so it sits beneath the layer containing the masked figure. You might as well name that layer figure for the sake of good housekeeping. 
Step 16. Keep the base layer active and go to Edit Greater Than Fill, Shift plus F5, choose white as your fill color and click OK. The base layer is filled with white, so our figure now sits atop a nice plain background. Next, click the figure layer to make it active. Step 17. Go back down to the Layer Options panel and click the Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer button. Choose Levels from the menu that appears. A new Levels 1 Adjustment Layer is created above the Figure Layer. We are going to use this adjustment to add a little more contrast to the image. Step 18. In the Properties panel for the Levels Adjustment, you can drag the Highlight slider towards the middle of the histogram to increase the contrast. Then go back to the Layer Options panel and click the Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer button again and choose Black and White from the menu. Step 19. A Black and White 1 Adjustment Layer is added to the top of the layer stack, converting the image to monochrome. If you want, you can move the various color sliders or click on one of the presets to affect changes to the contrast and gray tones in the image. Step 20. At this point, we have our figure removed from its background, converted to black and white, and the contrast increased, ready for the next stage of the technique. This is where the second image we open comes into play for the double exposure effect. Step 21. Click on the Document tab of the other image to view it. Press MD plus A to select the entire image. Press CD plus C to copy all the pixels to the clipboard and then return to your other active document. Press MD plus V to paste the image into your document. Make sure it is at the top of the stack and name it Street. Step 22. Keep the Street layer active and change the blend mode of this layer to screen. You'll see how the image changes. The darker areas of the street image only appear when it is in combination with any dark areas of the figure layer below it. This is the key to a double exposure effect. Step 23. Any bright areas of the street layer now appear to punch a hole in the image of the figure below it. You can now press MD plus T to scale, rotate and move the image of the street until you get a combination of the two images that looks good to you. Step 24. After a bit of trial and error, we have arrived at a good composition. At this point, the edges of the street image are quite visible, particularly across her shoulder and arms. That is easy to remedy, but first, we need to convert this image to black and white too. Step 25. Add a new black and white 2 adjustment layer above the street layer. We want to make sure that this adjustment only affects the street layer, so right-click it and choose Create Clipping Mask from the menu that appears. A small arrow, pointing down at the street layer, tells you it is clipped. Step 26. In many cases, a double exposure effect like this is done primarily in black and white, but what happens if you wanted to bring some color back into it? That is quite easy to do. Make sure your foreground color is set as black and then pick a large, soft brush of about 1,500 pixels. Step 27. The black and white 2 layer has a mask that you can click on to make it active, and then use your large, black brush to paint on that mask. Each dab of black hides that part of the black and white adjustment you applied. Color starts to reappear with each stroke. Step 28. We just revealed a small amount of the yellow sunlit area of the street image to add some warmth to it. Make the street layer active and click the Add Layer Mask button. This adds a mask to the street image, so you can use a large, soft, black brush on this mask to conceal any of the unwanted edges of the street. Step 29. We've used the black brush on the street layer mask to blend out the edges of the street image along the left edge of the figure's ponytail. We've also masked the area around their face, so it can now be seen. Finally, we masked the cobbled area so it blends into her shoulder and arm. Step 30. In the same way we allowed color back into the image of the street, we can do the same with the image of the girl, if you want. Click on the black and white 1 adjustment layer to make it active, and use the large, black brush to conceal its effect in certain areas. Step 31. As you brush on the black and white 1 layer mask, its effect is concealed, 
and the original color of the figure is revealed again. We brought her face back to its original color along with her shoulder and hands. This part of the process is purely optional, as is revealing color in the street image too. Step 32. With those tweaks in place, the double exposure effect is complete. These kinds of images are often used as movie posters and can sometimes convey a sense of a memory revisited. In this case, perhaps our main character is remembering a happy time spent walking down a sunlit street as a child.